Russia's celebrated Mir deep sea submersibles have uncovered quite a few secrets hidden underwater. On one occasion, a scientific expedition found traces of the so called gold train, which crashed into Lake Baikal in the early 20th century. According to the scientists, part of the Russian Empire's gold reserves is thought to be still on the lake bed, amidst what is left of old railway cars. Some claim it lies in Siberian monasteries. Others say it is hidden away in caves in the country's far east, or even in what is now the Czech Republic. What happened to the bulk of the Russian Empire's gold reserves, which went missing in 1919, is one of the most enduring myths of Russian history. Baikal is not the only place linked to the mystery of the Russian Empire's gold reserve. What lies on the bed of the world's deepest lake may only be the tip of the iceberg. In the past century, trainloads of gold went missing across the country. The precious payloads travelled from west to east, leaving a multitude of secrets and rumours in their wake. Kazan is a city 800 kilometres east of Moscow. Most of the Russian Empire's gold reserve set out on a long journey from this old city nearly a hundred years ago. The Bolsheviks had seized power in Russia after the 1917 revolution. The civil war was still raging, and at that time there was fighting on the streets between the monarchist white movement and the Bolshevik Red Army. Power in the city changed hands many times. This photo was taken in early 1918. The Red Army Horse Cavalry is marching victoriously along the streets of Kazan. The Bolsheviks seized this building as a matter of priority. At the time, it was the Kazan branch of the National Bank. Nearly 90 years have passed since then, but today too there is a bank behind these doors. According to the bank's accounts, there were some 1,280 tons of valuables here in 1918, including gold, platinum and silver. Today, the gold alone would be worth more than $26 billion. At the time that Russian gold reserve was one of the world's largest, if not the largest, the USA had not yet accumulated the colossal gold reserves it has now. Transporting such a bulky and heavy cargo was quite a problem. The Bolsheviks wasted no time laying tram tracks leading to the bank building. The idea was to use trams to take the gold to the river pier. This old picture shows Balshaya Prolomnia Street. The cars keep on the footpath because the rest of the cobblestone pavement is occupied by tracks. The curve leads directly to the bank's main entrance. The gold was to have been removed from the bank on August the 5th, 1918. What prevented the operation? The answer to the question is contained in the archive of Alter Litvin, professor of history at Kazan University. He has drawn on witness reports to reconstruct that day's events almost in full. One of the eyewitnesses writes that trams brought teams of workmen to the basements of the Kazan Bank only in the evening of August the 5th. They were about to start removing valuables from the bank when the city was shelled by the enemy. When four trucks took them and 50 armed Red Army men back to the bank, they started moving the gold out despite the shelling. But they could take out only 100 crates with gold worth 6 million rubles and 95 million rubles worth of banknotes. The White Army and units of the so-called Czechoslovak Legion entered Kazan on August the 7th, 1918. The commander, Vladimir Kapel, sent a telegram to army headquarters after he visited the bank. It said the trophies are beyond all calculation. We have seized Russia's gold reserve. The whites were in no mood to repeat the Bolsheviks' mistake. They made swift arrangements for the valuables to be taken out of Kazan to a safe distance from the front line. 
Here in this yard, they brought carts to this backyard. Then, everybody capable of lifting heavy weights helped shift those enormous loads. The gold was taken to the port by trams on tracks laid by the Bolsheviks, but they never had the opportunity to use them. The cargo was guarded by the Russian soldiers, although legionnaires from the Czechoslovak Corps were the first to seize the Kazan bank. Pavel Kuthan is a military historian as well as the president of the Czechoslovak Legionnaires Memorial Society. This is the standard uniform of the Russian army worn during World War I. This one is the uniform of the servicemen of the Czech Brigade, as can be seen from the crimson shoulder straps. The Czech Brigade was formed in the summer of 1914 and became the basis for the Czechoslovak Legion in Russia. During World War I, Russian Emperor Nicholas II backed the idea of forming a military brigade consisting of Czechs and Slovaks living in Russia. The legionnaires were to fight on the side of the Russian army against Austria-Hungary and Germany. Immediately after the 1917 revolution, the Czechoslovak Legion gave support to the white movement in Russia against the Bolsheviks. But afterwards, all the legionnaires wanted was to get back to their home country. These pictures are from the archives of the Military Institute in Prague. They tell the story of the Czechoslovak Legion's journey by rail from Samara to Vladivostok in the country's east. The gold train followed the same route. The Czechoslovaks fought in a special sector of the front. When Admiral Kolchak seized power, they took a neutral position. Now they wanted to achieve their initial goal. The aim was to get to Vladivostok with the intention of returning to Europe. This means that nobody but Admiral Kolchak had access to the gold reserve. An anti-Bolshevik government formed in Siberia in November 1918 named Alexander Kolchak, Russia's head of state and supreme commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the white movement. Kolchak took control of part of the gold reserve that the whites had seized in Kazan. A Bolshevik counter-offensive in the summer of 1919 forced Kolchak's army to retreat eastwards. When the trainload of gold set out on the long journey through Siberia, Kolchak was in his own personal carriage next to the steam locomotive. Units of the Czechoslovak Legion made sure the train had free passage throughout the route. At that time, they were in control of the entire length of the Trans-Siberian Railway. Professor of History at Prague's Military Institute has traced the route of the gold train based on military reports and accounts by officers of the Czechoslovak Legion. In 1920, officials from the Ministry of Finance of former Tsarist Russia were constantly with the Russian gold reserve traveling from Kazan to Irkutsk. This means they were in control of the gold in one way or another. Of course, there is much speculation about whether or not some of it was stolen. The golden train had covered a long distance by 1920. The gold was taken from Kazan to Samara. There, it was placed on a train and then sent to Omsk. From Omsk, the golden train went further to Irkutsk, in the east of the country. Somewhere near Tirit train station, it was discovered that a huge amount of the gold was missing. By that time, on Kolchak's orders, the guard of the golden train was handed over to the Czechoslovak legionnaires. Tirit is a small station. The train loaded with gold came here nearly 90 years ago. Thirteen crates of bullion were found to be missing on January the 12th, 1920, eight days after the legionnaires began guarding the train. The theft was reported by the Czechoslovaks because the Russian guards had disappeared, so there was no one else who could report the theft. Some of the treasures had also disappeared. That was discovered early in the morning by the Czechoslovaks standing guard by it. When they approached the carriage to find out what had happened, they saw that the doors had been broken and that something was missing inside. 